how to find a perfect hair transplant clinic for you utilizing my four step hair clinic elimination method I have been sharing with my one on one clients over the last couple of years with great successes. The goal of this method is to help you maximize your hair transplant success while avoiding things like ending up with an over harvested donor area, unnatural hairline, unnatural temples or other nightmares like a poor survival rates. So if you want to be one of the guys who do all these things right and find a perfect hair clinic for them make sure you stay tuned until the end of this video and before we start as always shout out to our sponsor go fiber these are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better so make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit go fiber get a free sample of your choice and try them out see if you like them during the step one of my hair clinic elimination method, your goal is going to be to eliminate all the clinics that are not specializing in your hair type based on your ethnicity. And we have only three such hair types. It will be Asian hair, it will be Caucasian hair, and it will be Afro hair. If you look at different types of hair, you notice that their diameters differ in terms of thickness. And also their hair shafts differ from straight to curly to coiled. And these aspects can be both advantages or disadvantages during certain periods of the hair transplant. Now talking about Asian hair, although it has a very good hair thickness and diameter, this can be actually a disadvantage when trying to do and recreate very soft looking temples and hairline. Also, FUE mega sessions are not advisable as much as by Caucasians because the thick Asian hair graft requires also a bigger punch to be utilized for the FUE extraction and thus it will also leave a bigger scar thus the state of over harvested donor area can be reached faster here the hair per graft ratio of Asian hair is the lowest ranging from 1.5 to 1.8 hairs per graft on average and a skilled Asian hair transplant specialist should be aware of this limitation especially when trying to restore high Norwood classes. Now Caucasian patients will find it easiest to filter out potential clinics in this first step of my hair clinic elimination method as most of the hair clinics worldwide is primarily specializing in Caucasian type of hair and has great experience with it. The biggest challenge that Caucasian patients may be facing would be a big variety in the hair diameter that can go from 40 to 90 microns making it harder sometimes for certain patients of Caucasian origin like Nordic or Scandinavian patients with fine hair sometimes having trouble to find a dense packing hair transplant specialist who will be able to dense pack that fine and thin hair in a way it's gonna look very dense even after one surgery. Now patients with afro hair type on the other hand don't necessarily need to focus on finding the best dense packing specialist in hair restoration since their hair is naturally creating curls and coils and this will contribute to that fullness and coverage once the hair grows longer however the drawback of the afro hair type is its higher transaction rate on average since the follicles are curling not only above but also below the skin surface and these curls oftentimes cannot be predicted easily even by the best hair transplant clinics or doctors. This is also mainly the reason why Afro hair received the highest FUE difficulty score in the recent study from 2022. So welcome to the step number two. By now you should have already filtered out clinics that were not specializing in your hair type based on your ethnicity, but you still may be left with like dozens of clinics. So let's filter them out further based on identifying red flags in their before and after galleries, video or picture galleries. These are gonna be the red flags that make most of the hair transplant patients really unhappy about their hair transplant clinic choice. If your goal is to find a perfect clinic for your hairline or temporal hair restoration or both, you need to check the following things. Number one, the hairlines that they produce in their result galleries should have different hairline designs, higher, medium or more aggressive ones. That way you know that the clinic is able to give you an age appropriate 
appropriate or face shape appropriate hairline and it's not going to be able just to do the same whole straight line as with other guys as it was the case with Loris Carius that we already checked out on our channel where we noticed that his hairline was way too low actually made his facial thirds disproportionate and actually made his facial symmetry worse unfortunately because it was positioned too low you also want to make sure that the hairlines are kind of exposed on the before and after results maybe comb through with the comb or even styled up like you see me right now so you can see the outline of the hairline you can see whether there are some singles or double grafts in the hairline we know that the double and triple grafts are making the hairline look more unnatural more pluggy making it look more obvious and more detectable by people around you Hairlines like these are still common. Even celebrities are getting them nowadays, like Jordan Shakiri. We have also made a breakdown on him as well. So we wanna avoid that. You wanna have single hairs in the hairline most of the time, 80 to 85% of the time, and then some doubles to add more fullness and density. Now, when you see many hairline results with hair come forward, like in a fringe, where you don't even see the outline of the hairline, you can be skeptical because you don't know whether there are not some doubles or triples in the hairline. Now, when evaluating the temples, temporal hairline is very important and temples it's something else than the hairline many clinics make the mistake of transplanting the hairline and just keeping it on with the temples like that and that's a mistake because temples they require different angles and different direction of the place graft compared to the hairline and the way to do it is to use only single hairs on the temple and make the angle look very tight it's actually the most acute transplanted angle on the entire scalp is the temporal hair restoration the unnatural temples where the hair is sticking out too much are are still being produced even nowadays in 2022 even on high level celebrities like conor mcgregor having this same issue so you want to avoid it at all costs if you are balding on your crown area and you want to find a perfect doctor who will restore your crown area with a great success then make sure you look at the before and after results where the results are restored like this in the world pattern because this is the pattern that will help the hair transplant doctor to put the minimum amount of graft on the crown while achieving the best possible coverage across the whole crown area as you can see it naturally when somebody is not losing hair on the crown you see that world pattern and on top of that always avoid going with clinics who only give you like very low quality photos photoshopping them is very easily where it's also very hard to tell whether there is hair fibers or some concealer in the hair used and that could be also on the mid scalp or crown not just the hairline so always be cautious of that always look on the high quality high resolution before and after results with the same lighting on the before and after result you also need to always check the donor area before and afters and i know some clinics don't provide it with every patient but you want to see it at least with the, each third patient on their website or gallery on instagram or youtube because if the donor area will be over harvested if they do an improper extraction pattern it will not be homogenous then the whole donor area will be disrupted with the first session and it will probably not be able even to be used on the second surgery and if yes then it will not be able to be properly utilized and thus the patient will not be able to have many hairs extracted over multiple surgeries so that's the problem always look for these red flags like over harvesting of the donor patchiness on the donor from the sides or back because these are signs of over harvesting especially important by cases of 3000 grafts or more because these are the cases where the chance of over harvesting is much higher Welcome to the step number three of my hair clinic elimination method. By this time, you should have already started reaching out to different clinics or doctors and getting quotes, getting offers on like how many grafts you will need, what will be the approach, will, be, will it be done in one session or two sessions or more. I know that the graft numbers can sometimes differ a lot from clinic to clinic so this step is going to help you make sense out of that and help you make the best possible decision i came up with four risk factors that will determine your hair transplant difficulty or difficult your hair transplant will be the more conservative graph number you should choose and also the higher doctor involvement you should be interested in and the more you should kind of strive for doctors who are members of ishrs abhrs iahrs and similar uh, hair transplant boards and committees like fu europe etc and you should aim to have a very high involvement of these doctors in your surgery at least in the incision phase so what are the four risk factors that will decide how difficult your hair transplant is going to be first of all the more grafts you will need the more grafts there need to be extracted and the more demanding this job is going to be the more mistakes there can be like 
potential for over harvesting, potential for worse graft survival, potential for transaction rate, etc. etc. So high graft number means high risk. So if you need like somewhere from 3000 grafts or more for your hair transplant, this could be already classified as kind of high risk hair transplant because it's already a mega session almost. The risk factor number two would be a weak donor area, average donor area that is already looking kind of patchy and thin. In such case, it's much better to go with a lower graft offer and with a doctor based hair transplant where the doctor is very involved. The risk number three is if you are not on medication. If you are not on medication, you are adding on a lot onto that hair transplant complexity. Like how, what is gonna be the ideal hairline for you if you are not on medication? taking into account the future hair loss, especially if you are a young guy in your 20s, early 30s. These are gonna be some complex decisions that need to be done before the hair transplant. And it's only possible to do it right if you have a one patient per day, a doctor, highly doctor focused practice where the doctor has actually enough time to speak with you for at least 30 minutes to come up with a hairline that will make sense even in 10 or 20 years, assuming even more hair loss will kind of uncover because you are not on medication. So this is gonna be a challenge. It's gonna add on to your hair transplant difficulty and complexity. Now the risk factor number four, and thus the reason that would make you choose a doctor-based practice with a high doctor involvement and go with a lesser amount of grafts initially with your first hair transplant would be that you are the type of guy with a history of scarring alopecia or folliculitis, dermatitis. These are skin-related conditions that that could complicate the survival rate of the grafts, or you are somebody who has already done a hair transplant, but the recipient area didn't show any regrowth even after 12 months or later. These are maybe gonna be few guys, but very high risk groups that definitely will benefit from choosing a doctor-based approach where there is a high patient focus, one surgery per day type of practice, where there's not gonna be done so many grafts per session to test the area, whether it's gonna even take. In such case, it's not gonna make much sense to grab that area with thousands of grafts if there may be actually some complication underneath that would cause a very bad survival rate. In such case, choosing a doctor-based practice with a high doctor, doctor involvement will be advisable for you to optimize around these issues to get the best possible survival rate after all. And obviously there are some additional questions and things I like to even dive even deeper into when researching a perfect hair transplant clinic for my clients. So if you are interested in consulting your situation with me, I will be happy to help you out in person. And on the link in the video description below, you can find out more about how I can help you out one-on-one. -on -one. Now let's come to the step number four. Now, if you filtered out all of these clinics properly during all of these three previous steps, you should be now left only with the best possible options for your particular case. That's how this thing was set up. And right now, it's gonna be the price. You're gonna be looking at your offers and how many grafts you could get for how much money. Now, I didn't include any FUE, DHI, or FUT decision process here because I think that most of you guys watching will be interested in FUE and FUE is also the most and fastest developing type of hair transplant procedure in the world. That is why I will just assume that most of you guys will want it. I know for some guys it may not be the best thing to do FUE, but this is a small percentage of individuals that obviously you can consult me if you are interested that maybe FUT is better for you. FUE versus DHI, these types of dilemmas, but in this video, I didn't want to dive too much deep into it. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Happy decision processing. And if you are interested, I'm always here for you to consult. If you check out the link in the video description below, you can learn more about my one-on-one -on -one consulting services which clinic to choose, assisting you throughout the whole hair transplant decision process, helping you maximize your hair transplant success, avoiding all the possible pitfalls. If you wanna save time, you wanna consult with somebody who is seeing this on a daily basis, consulting clients, permanently over the last couple of years and knows the ins and outs of the industry. That was it from me, everybody. Thank you so much for the support on YouTube and I'm gonna be seeing you soon in another video. Take care, everybody.